Hey guys, welcome to this week's Yawa. We are here to answer your questions and to start off with a brief announcement slash mockery of myself. Um, I did lose my cell phone this weekend in the lake. So if you, uh, if you have attempted to contact me and uh, haven't heard back, it's probably because there was some form of loss of translation there. I lost a lot of stuff, not everything. I was able to kind of pull from a backup because I'm real on top of those back from February. Ah, yeah. uh, so if you haven't heard from me, just reach back out. I am not ignoring you. I just lost my phone in the lake. Good story. What did what did Ethan learn from this story? Um, don't help people. That is not what you learned. Well, I lost it at the boat ramp. I jumped out of the boat because a gentleman slipped on the boat ramp, fell. And I went, oh my God, jumped out of my boat, went over to help him, and it flopped out of my pocket into the edge of the lake. And then there was a good, pretty, pretty good amount of waves and undertow. It's gone somewhere. So I, I was actually referring to the fact that you probably learned that you should back your phone up a little more often than since February. Okay, yes, I should also do that. I, I did set it up now. It's uh, there's This is a really cool thing called technology, and my phone is now set up on iCloud backup, so every evening it backs all my stuff up as long as I'm connected to Wi-Fi, and I shouldn't lose anything if I happen to lose my phone again. So, moral of the story is... Back up your stuff, yo. Yes. So, we had a really, really fun weekend, though, and a great puppies send home all the families came all the puppies went it was fantastic <laughs> and in that process we actually were given a couple more gifts so we wanted to say a quick thank you and talk about those for a second somebody knows i'm a bourbon fan and so this is the jefferson ocean we've talked about on some of the other things it says voyage 17 they have multiple different voyages and all of them have slightly different things that happened to the bourbon as it was aging. So depending on where the voyage actually went and what kind of seas they had and things like that. So yeah, seas and temperatures and all those, all those fun factors. things. So we're going to be trying that today. And then we also were given, and, well, wait, 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 wait. Oh. I'm, I'm announcing because <sighs> you don't know how to announce well enough. We were also given by the same gentleman, Chris, uh, a Beja which is a red blend. It's, um, he said that abeja means bee. So this is an interesting wine that I'm going to try because though Ethan loves bourbon, I'm not quite, okay, I'm not a fan at all of bourbon. Uh, I don't have the acquired taste for it or whatever it is, but I am going to drink a little bit of this red wine and I'm gonna drink it out of one of those oh, yes. fancy so glasses. It's a local uh, distillery called the Gulch or Gulch Distillers, and uh, he got us a couple of Glen Karens, those these little sipper cups. So she's gonna sipper some uh, wine out of a cup, and I'm gonna sipper some whiskey out of a cup. Now. And then also from Pete and his family, they got us, and this is really cool. Standing Stone Vineyards. They got us a red wine as well, but they said that this is best chilled, which I haven't done yet because I'm really bad about like thinking ahead. So I'm not gonna try this today because I want it to taste as amazing as they say it's going to taste. So I'm going to chill that and maybe that'll be popped open on our next uh, Yawa. Oh my goodness. Easy now, hey. Anybody know what kind of wine bottle opener this is? It's the best kind, but uh, only if you know how to use it properly, right, babe? <laughs> you heard just picking. <laughs> it's got a little bee on the inside of that. Oh, I need to keep keep the cork. Keep the cork. cork. Let me see if I show you that. Um, I don't know if it'll you know, pick that up, but there's like a, a bee on the end of that. But we had a great puppy sent home with the Breezy Walker litter this weekend. We got to meet some really great people from all over the country, as well as reconnect with some of our previous puppy buyers that are getting another dog from us. Uh, and it was a great weekend. Hopefully you got a chance to watch the video that was posted yesterday. We did I, like a little highlight reel yeah. of all of the excitement that is getting a dog from us. And I actually watched it and cried um, because I've, you know, 
helped raise this litter for the last eight weeks and I knew all those puppies so well and oh thank you mm -hmm. thank you thank you and it was really touching so I I cried I I will admit so good job getting that b-roll Ethan and our videography editing aficionado Silas with Red 11 Media did a great job putting that all together so I also wanted to make a quick announcement because we've been being we've been being asked we've been asked maybe that's better grammar uh -huh. we've been asked on social media quite a bit did you keep a puppy everybody wants to know did you keep a puppy well yes yes we did I couldn't pass up an opportunity on this litter we've wanted an opportunity to get a puppy out of breezy for a while now um, and so yes we kept a puppy we actually kept tornado and to make things super confusing we ended up naming him Zephyr because <laughs> I really loved that name and I didn't want it to just go away because nobody used that name from the puppy send home so I was like I gotta do it so his now registered name will be Standing Stones Calm Before the Storm which is a little bit of a play on his mama's name which is Standing Stones Prairie Storm and he is a pretty chill, calm little fellow, so I think that's going to fit him really well. Uh, and then Jess, one of our trainers, she actually kept a puppy from this litter too, a little female. She kept Windy. Mm -hmm. And to make matters, you know, slightly confusing as well, because why not? She's going to name her Twister, because again, loved the name and nobody used it, so we got to try that. And her name is going to be Standing Stones Eye of the Storm. Again, a little bit of a play with the storm theme with Breezy's name. So I thought it would be a fun uh, little matchup with those two puppies. So Yeah, both puppies have a really calming uh, presence and personality, which goes hand in hand with the calm before the storm. And the eye of the storm is like that calming in the middle of all of the disaster. So it's kind of cool. Very cool. Ooh, I like that. You're supposed to like ching. Oh. Yeah. That's really good. I like this a lot too. Good. <laughs> well, thank you again very much, Chris, for yes. the wonderful libations. We are going to enjoy those while we answer some great questions from you guys. To get started, I thought this was a good question to kind of segue into about us a little bit because. You know, we started off with some announcements and we need to kind of continue that. So from Mariah Connerly on Instagram. Hi, love all your content. Sometimes I can't believe how much advice and training tips you give to us for free. You maybe have answered this before, but how did you all get into training and breeding hunting dogs? Um, we have kind of answered that in, before, but it's not a bad thing to talk about again. Basically... I really, really, really wanted a hunting dog and growing up was, we had a family dog and I kind of talked about wanting to get a hunting dog and I was, was told no. So we didn't need any more dogs at the house and I made a decision when I went to college that I was going to try and make that work. We tried to do all of the things quote unquote right for the dog in our opinion and we made the decision to get a dog once we had an offer on a house that we were closing on within 30 days and all of this stuff clicked into place and then it didn't and the the house situation actually fell through but we ended up getting the dog in preparation of so then we raised a puppy short hair puppy in an apartment and needed help and reached out did all the research that I could do and ah shoot we're actually going to do um, a video on this because I found it the other day. It was actually, it was the first videos that I found online that I tried to utilize to help myself learn how to train a dog. It was kind of- Which is a lot of what people are doing these days. They're yes. searching the YouTubes and finding the videos and trying to emulate what's going on and work with their dog themselves. Now it was about 11 years ago. Now it'd be pretty close to that. 12. 12 years 12 ago now years ago. that we got the dog and I started doing these things. And at the time there were virtually zero videos on YouTube about hunting dog training specifically. I'm searching stuff like how to teach my puppy, how to start this, how to, what do I do here? All of these things. And there was very, 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 very little. I wish that I had been able to start creating videos like we are doing now, then we would be, but, um, all of that being said, we, 
I found a subscription service and it was an email thing that I signed up for that they sent me a video every week of this little black lab puppy doing training videos. And it, it petered out after like the first month. They only did four videos. And the first video was like, um, it's, I don't know, it's like, a, I, I'll show you the video. In another video, we'll kind of do some reaction to some of these earlier training videos that we tried to utilize. Uh, I think that would be kind of fun. But I watched those and then I did find somebody else that had a couple videos and I reached out to them and was like, these videos are really like poor quality, but the information is good. And I reached out to them to see if they would trade because I'm a poor college student at the time. Would you trade out some help with the training videos? I could try and help you shoot some. And, and we drastically improved what they had at the time, but even watching those now, they were pretty bad too um, that I helped put together. So all of that being said, going out there um, turned into a job offer to do what I was doing, helping with that aspect of things and the, the media and the growth and the, everything as a full-time job. And then once I kind of got a majority of that caught up, I'm like, I really don't have enough work with this anymore. I uh, can help train dogs. And that turned into a full-time dog training position. So. And because I absolutely also love dogs and puppies, when I got to see what Ethan was doing for a job, I was like, I need to do this too. I need to figure out a way where I can also help train dogs and be part of the puppy stuff because I love the puppy stuff. Anytime there was a litter being born at that kennel, I wanted to be involved. I wanted to help whelp the litters. She'd come sit with me in the evening while I'd sit with dogs all night long. For free, so. just because I loved it and I wanted to learn and it was really interesting to me and I love animals. So we uh, would sit and watch puppies be born on... Whatever. Saturday on, night. On our evenings, <laughs> yeah. days, whatever, free. And uh, that really just confirmed to me that I had a passion for this as well. And I wanted to learn as much as I could so that um, we could eventually do it for ourselves a little bit differently, but for it's ourselves. Big, it was a big facility. There were a lot of dogs that moved through there. And I got a, gained a lot of experience in a short amount of time. And after about three years of being there, Kat and I got the opportunity to move down closer to my family. Um, and all of our family now, and uh, that's when Standing Stone Kennel started. So The rest is history. Yes, and if you go back and watch some of our other Yawas, we've hit on this topic in the past in small little pieces here and there, so watch everything, subscribe to our channel, <laughs> there is like somebody. everything, <laughs> hit notifications so you don't miss any of the videos, but you'll get all of our backstory eventually. Yeah, definitely. We appreciate all of y'all that subscribe, but there is, there's one subscriber that has topped them all in as far as I know. Um, she actually reached out to me and said, thank you for all the content you produced. I have literally watched all of your videos. Now we so, so people say we watch all your videos. She said, Nope, I've literally watched all your videos. I'm caught up. I'm ready for the next one. Are you guys going to continue to post every single day or how is that going to work? Because I watch everything. So if you can compete with watching everything, throw a comment down below and we'll give it a big heart and shout out. So, Because that's pretty dang impressive. Very impressive. We have one or two videos out there. Yeah, just one or two. And then the last question that I went in, and then blah, blah, blah. Let me just have another drink of wine. It'll limber up my tongue, I, I think, say, a little Those bit. weren't real words. But uh, but uh. That's your saying. So... <laughs> one last question that I wanted to answer in part one of this week's Yawa is from Barnsey84 on Instagram. Nice. When picking a breeder, what are important factors to consider looking at buying my first hunting dog and wanting to get a GSP? What questions should be asked? Should we be asking a breeder or things you should look for when visiting the breeder? Your content is awesome and very helpful in getting ready for my first hunting dog. So I wanted to just mention that we just did a video um, and it's hard. I understand like our videos, we are, we're coming up with a video almost once a day and they get buried pretty quickly. We try and put some into some playlists to make them easier to find. We're trying to do a little restructuring of our YouTube channel right now and get a little more organized with some more playlists. Uh, but there's a lot of content on there. So if you missed the video where we talked about how to pick a breeder and puppy, you should definitely check it out because it had a lot of great information. And I wanted to bring it up because we are getting closer to going to pick up a lab puppy that we worked through the pro process of picking a breeder, and he's going to help us pick a puppy from a litter that he helped us pick uh, in 
the beginning of August. Yes, very short period of time from now, we will be labbed up again. So hopefully the link for that video can pop up here somewhere, but it would be a great one to check out. We talk about the questions you should be asking, how to have a conversation with a breeder. Even though it's a lab versus a short hair, there's still a lot of similar questions that you're gonna wanna be asking. Absolutely. So do we have time for another one? Yeah. I love it when he says yes. So next question, he tells me yeah, no yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. So this was a good question too from G Sander underscore 402 on Instagram. In field testing dogs are required to be steady to flush, shot and kill. For a 100% hunting dog, no testing, do you recommend this or just for the dogs to be steady to flush? So this is a really good question because we've got a video series going on right now showing how we are steadying up a dog to be steady to wing shot and fall with Hatch. We actually just shot another video today of that process um, that'll be yeah, getting- he's doing a really nice job. Yeah, he really is. And it's awesome because we're able to show the progression and the step-by-step -step process of what we do to get a dog really steady to that level. Um, and he's still got a long ways to go, of course, but mm -hmm. we are making really great progress with him and we're sharing that progress with you. So if you are interested in that type of steadiness training, definitely check it out um, and make sure that you have notifications turned on so you can continue following along with his progress. But if you were just having a meat hunting dog, I would stay, say steady to flush is a really great level of steadiness for that. So but it's going to be a holding point until the bird takes off and then the dog can take off with the bird. Yes. But one little caveat is it really depends what you're hunting as well as if you're hunting wild birds versus maybe some preserved birds and the quality of preserved birds you might be hunting. So if you're hunting wild birds, pheasants, for example, um, even out in Montana where you were hunting uh, really wide open country, yeah. the dogs broke at wing. So we're steady to flush. As Soon as the bird went, they went. They were able to get on those uh, birds quicker and make some really great retrieves and then continue hunting really quickly. Yep. Uh, all of my dogs when I guide, all of the dogs when we hunt, except for when we go to Texas to hunt quail, um, break at wing. Now, the reason for the quail aspect of things is we put a ton of emphasis on steadiness with quail and around quail and about quail and with the quail and all the quail when we're doing hunt tests, because primarily in those hunt tests where they're running master hunter, they use quail. So dogs get pretty tuned in with Quail mean don't uh, don't move, and we have a really cool setup down there that uh, allows me to be able to continue handling dogs that way for the most part. Um, and truly, most of our dogs, once you know they have finished their testing at that high level and they go hunting, especially on quail, if they think that they're going to break at wing, one little handle, one little correction, and they're like, "Oh, got yep, it! Got I it. know the game now. We're going to stand steady." So. Um, definitely, like I mentioned, depends on what you're hunting. And I wanted to throw in there, like if you're doing a lot of preserve hunts, sometimes those birds can fly really low or don't fly as well. So handling a dog steady to wing shot and fall is potentially a safety situation where you'd rather have them under control so that the birds are getting up, flushing, and having a safe opportunity to shoot before the dog is actually moving after the bird. Absolutely. So. Great, Thanks everybody for watching. Question. Yeah, it was a great question. Thanks everybody for watching. That's the end of part one for this week. We're going to take a short break and we will be back with part two very soon.